so real quick, this is Jimmy Sabonia. Mr. Sabonia has been at Helena High, when did you graduate? 2017. 17. Yeah. So Jimmy was two years of my student and one year of Mr. Lee Holmes. Mr. Lee Holmes was the um, old educator here for how many years? Mr. Holmes? 45 years. So all the stuff that you guys are essentially learning was kind of piggybacked off of what he has established. So a lot of credit goes has to go to Mr. Lee Holmes. So give him a little round of applause. There we go. Cool. So this is a byproduct of both of those educators kind of putting together a prime example. So he's here to give you a speech. Yeah. It's all you, buddy. Like you said, I'm Jimmy, and so I'm just here to give you guys some information of kind of what I've gathered over the past five years after leaving high school. And you know, if you actually enjoy drafting and you really enjoy the class and you want to get into engineering or architecture, I can give you some pretty good insight. Um, so a couple of things that I'd like to cover is, you know, I'm going to go over kind of my background and history that I have in the engineering world, starting with once I left high school. Uh, give you guys some insight to different aspects of the industry that you could get involved in. Um, contracting, uh, that's probably the most important thing in terms of drafting, because that's how you're going to get paid for the work that you can do. And uh, I also have some, I have a resume example and just some interview advice that you can have for job interviews that you guys are going to have coming up very shortly in your guys' future. And then we'll end it with just some questions that you guys might have. Um, so to start with, like Spearson said, I used to be a uh, former drafting student here. I used to sit back in the spot right by the printer. Absolutely loved it. Uh, turned out to be my favorite class. I didn't really, I took industrial tech, didn't really like the drafting in there but I actually took the class of drafting, got way better equipment, and then eventually I hopped into AutoCAD and I haven't looked back ever since. And so right now I am a senior in the civil engineering program at Montana State, and so I'm gonna graduate in the fall. Um, when I was in high school, I got an engineering internship with the city of Helena and I worked directly under the city engineer, Ryan Leland, and it gave me some pretty good insight to introduction about it. Learn more about the political and the process side of how public works projects actually are administered throughout the city. Uh, kind of just got into some base plans, creation forum, uh, would use GIS to map out different things. Um, and then following that, uh, a couple years into college, I ended up getting a water resource internship here with Dowell. Uh, their office is located right off Cedar Street. And so I did a bunch of hydraulic design for them. Um, I actually have this plan set. This was the first design project that I did basically for a company and got paid for it following after graduating, you know, the drafting program here. And, Honestly, like I would say all of you that are, have made it through AutoCAD, all of you are equally as capable of being able to do something like this for a company. And it's really easy, and if you enjoy doing it, like I said, it's fun and not even really a job at the end of the day. Um, so following my work with Dow, I worked for them for about eight months, uh, and then with the pandemic, ended up losing my internship with them, and they just didn't have the overhead to be able to keep uh, really any of the interns. So I decided to lock down a job, and I ended up getting hired by Qit, who's the number one heavy civil contractor in the United States. They have over 35,000 employees total uh, between craft and staff, and they basically do conglomerate engineering projects, and great company to work for. They are construction oriented, but they look for engineering solutions, so there's a job for a lot of people. And so over this past summer, I was in San Francisco working on a 17 mile transportation project, and uh, it was a great time, learned a lot, and then this summer I'm actually moving to Hawaii to go work on the main airstrip repair at the Honolulu Airport with them. And so a uh, couple of insight that I can give you for the architecture in industry. If you guys are interested in that drafting, very similar to the curriculum, it's all residential based for the most part. I know Spearson's trying to get you guys more into Revit and focus on some other things, but residential drawings, those are gonna be the most common that you'd be going to. Um, additions to home and properties, that's probably one of the biggest things that you guys could hop into. Like almost right now, you could get in with a freelance drafting company. Uh, and they basically, with COVID, everything's removed through remote work. So they're able to essentially be able to work for clients all across the country. They don't even have to be on site to see anything, but you know, we're talking about you know additional decks, maybe pools, additions, anything recreational to homes. Uh, commercial and mixed use buildings, uh, if you actually wanna become a licensed architect, that's where you get more into those big establishments just so that you can effectively associate building codes, zoning and uh, fire safety would be a big one in terms of litigation that you deal with as an architect. Uh, you have to work very closely with other civil engineers just because you can't really build anything without their approval, but you also, you're focused more on the building codes, whereas, you know, civil engineers are more concerned with the codes for structural members and things like that. And then BIM is probably the biggest thing where you're going to be using products like Revit. Uh, BIM is uh, building information models. 
and that's basically just that's exactly what this image right here is. I was created in a 3D rendering program, and just gives your clients a better idea of it. And so, after that, uh, civil, mechanical, and electrical engineering. Um, there's three main aspects to civil engineering. Uh, you'd be doing hydraulics and hydrology, so pumps and pipes and open channels. Uh, there's structural design, and then transportation is going to be the other big one in terms of roadways. Uh, structural pertains more to actual buildings. Every single construction document does have structural details you have to follow. Uh, mechanical engineering, uh, big things that they look at is a concept called finite element analysis, or FEA. Uh, big on material science, looking at just the way products are designed and how they're going to manufacture them and make them better, and look at stress points. Uh, material science is big. Uh, basically, you can use programs like SolidWorks and you can analyze a bunch of different things inside of your concept that you'd want. And assembly drawings, much like you guys do in the AutoCAD unit if you've made it through there, that would be another big thing that you could end up doing for companies. Uh, you're going to have to be able to create assembly drawings. Like if you were contracted to design a new wheel for an airplane or something like that, right? You're still going to have to produce those same assembly drawings of how it's all going to be put together. And then electrical engineering, big ones, instrumentation, also pertains to mechanical. All of these are kind of interdisciplinary, honestly. They're very connected to each other. Um, and then electrical distribution wiring. I know Spearson has you guys working on some basic electrical stuff, which is awesome, but just being able to even see those diagrams at a very basic level, that's gonna help you guys a lot in the future, just because, I mean, even there's kids who spend two, three years in the electrical engineering program before they ever actually get to make it to doing design work or even draw, drafting with it. And then computer processes, um, anything that has like a breadboard or a motherboard, electrical engineers, they're going to have to be doing all those details. And again, that relates exactly back to the engineering plans. But if you wanted to get an electrical engineering stamp, it is related to computer engineering as well. So it's kind of an overview of those. Other useful software I wanted to point out to you guys. Um, so you guys pretty much are very heavy into AutoCAD. Um, in a lot of industry standards, there's a lot of Autodesk applications, and they do a great job just because they do make that software entirely free for you guys as students, and so you can access that now all the way until you're done with college, and that's kind of why they do that is just so that you guys are more familiar with it so that you can use it in the professional world. But Civil 3D is a big one. I use that a lot just because for civil engineering specific and site civil plans, that would be huge. Revit's becoming more and more prevalent in the industry, uh, pretty standard staple software. Uh, and you guys use Inventor, that's another really good start just because that leads into SolidWorks. Like, if you can use Inventor, SolidWorks will be relatively intuitive for you. Uh, there's just niche things that, that, that SolidWorks can do that Inventor doesn't necessarily key in on. Um, but nonetheless, if you are interested in mechanical engineering and you are good at 3D rendering software, there you go, you can use that in the professional world. Uh, S3 ArcMap GIS, that's a very big uh, program that a lot of engineering firms use just for any if you are constructing anything in a given location, it's just a mapping software and it helps with cartography, but it's also a very powerful tool just because you can utilize a bunch of different aspects of it to organize data, essentially. And then um, surveying software uh, that's respective to equipment, like if you guys have ever heard of Trimble or anything like that, they actually have rods and whatnot that are connected to satellites, let you get a lot of good information. Uh, Mastercam for CNC work, uh, that one's just specific to one type, but there's a lot of different machining uh, programs that you could learn throughout the years. And then also Revit Bluebeam, uh, that's a big one that's picking up. It's just a PDF markup program, but it'd be really good if you guys can learn it. You can go download it for free and it's relatively intuitive and it's a lot, lot better than Adobe PDF, like using Adobe Acrobat if you ever have to use that. Um, so in terms of contracted work, like I said, um, you could do, be doing a lot of remote work for clients right now in drafting, just because all you have to do is be able to produce plan sets. But like I said, you don't even have to be there for on-site conditions. You can just give rough estimates of that. Um, there's consulting that's huge. Uh, you'll always be able to do that. And that's honestly, whether you're in an office at a firm or you want to do your own private gig, both of those are, are huge. And people are always going to look for expertise because at the end of the day, you guys got to remember, there's not a lot of people who actually do have the technical knowledge of being able to produce drawings and auto. Um, yeah, and then bidding projects, that'd be the other one, is just, you know, knowing your efficiency in AutoCAD and being able to help clients in the future, it's just something that comes along with experience. In terms of public works, uh, requests for proposals are huge. Uh, responding to RFPs is going to be, you know, if you guys are looking at five years from now, if you're a senior in high school, you know, you're going to be graduated through an engineering program, you might be working for somewhere. You guys are going to be submitting RFPs to public works for different municipalities that are looking for you to do design work for them. and 
basically that comes with uh, being able to produce plans and specifications. And so I have some examples that I can show you guys after this. And then also just coming up with design alternatives beforehand and then actually being able to produce those into a drawing set. So that's why it's awesome that you guys have this class just because you do get so much freedom to be creative. You're not necessarily worried about specific design criteria and constraints. You guys just get to run wild and get very efficient in the program. Um, rock and design, so that was actually a private architecture or I, I should say a, so he, he has a business in Bozeman, he's a one-man company, and he had just graduated through the master's program of, at, of architecture at MSU. And basically at the point that he hired me, he, was, he found a uh, PE, so a professional engineer, that he could work for, and he was in Missouri, and he was licensed to work in like 40 other states. So they have a very large clientele that they can go to, but by quarter three of 2020, he was doing $165,000 in revenue. And so that is a slice of the pie that you guys could get. Honestly, if you graduated high school, you could go start your own private drafting company. Maybe you're not gonna be at that point quite yet, but you guys have potential to make a lot of money if that's something that you actually enjoy doing. Um, and so I just have some other uh, career advice for you guys. Um, I'll show you guys a resume that I used to get hired by Qit, just to give you guys a, an example of a good objective statement and different things that they'd be looking to and how to organize it as you guys get more experience. Um, use your drafting portfolio. Like to this day, I still have all of my drafting drawings from when I took this class. You guys got to realize, you know, if you want to be competitive in job interviews, like right now as high school students, you guys have more to show than most kids who are graduated through a full four year engineering program because you guys actually can show them you know, what you've done. And I don't have the booklets that he made, but the booklets are much better to show than just a folder of scattered drawings. Um, but nonetheless, you can show them all of it, and you guys actually have, you know, you have dozens of drawings, if not hundreds, that you're able to present. And most people aren't even gonna be able to do that. And employers, they, they will respect that. And honestly, like you guys, if you showed that to an engineering firm right now, like they would probably hire you over a college student to do dr basic drafting work. And so, me personally, I can tell you right now, um, AutoCAD is a very technical skill set. It makes you a more versatile engineer, regardless of what industry you want to go into. You're looking at about a ten to fifteen thousand dollars salary increase just from that. Like I can tell you, when I was acute, I was the highest paid intern on the project that I was at, and a lot of that had to do with my AutoCAD skill set, just because I did take the AutoCAD certified professional exam and I passed. Um, and that's just something you know. I would encourage you guys, like honestly, you guys could probably pass the exam. Like I didn't even study for it and just used everything that I learned from this class. I mean, a little bit from when I was at Dow kind of helped me as well. But I mean, if you guys have the general intuition, the exam really isn't that hard. But you know, you get that certification that people can't argue with that. You know what I mean? Like you're going to be making, like I said, anywhere from ten dollars to $15,000, if not more, depending on, you know, further and further you get into your career. And so just an example, like one of my buddies, he got hired to do instrumentation at Marathon Oil. He's in the electrical engineering program. He got hired on at $92,000 a year. And that's four, four years after leaving high school. So that's not bad. And one of his biggest parts of his job is actually doing the drafting for the instrumentation at an oil refinery and coming up with different designs for that. And me personally, like I'm probably gonna get salary around $80,000 and I'll end up making more money just because the company has a bunch of different bonuses that they choose to execute. But as I have AutoCAD, that's a reason, like that is a legit bargaining chip for me because now that I know, like working for Rock and Design, like I can literally tell that company, well, you know, if I don't like the price that they're giving me, well, I can tell them, well, I know the private drafting industry, I could go do freelance drafting and be making around 150,000 or something like that, you know what I mean? So there's all this different insight, but at the end of the day, experience is everything and I would recommend for you guys to get, ex get started as soon as you can. Um, and so I'll show you guys some examples of the work, kind of some different plans that I have. This um, is Bluebeam, right? Yeah, this is Bluebeam. Um, this is a very powerful tool. Uh, it's really prevalent in the construction industry just because you can use, um, you can use uh, kind of outlines and you can use it to take quantity takeoffs just so you can make sure that the plans of the municipality that you're working with actually did a correct job and your company doesn't lose money per se. Um, but this is an example of, this is a MDT project right here, and this is actually, so this is a secant pile wall, um, and it's, it's just the revegetation detail, but 
I'm going to tell you guys right now, I really like this example just because I'm certain that if you've taken one year of AutoCAD, that you guys could easily go in some place and be able to do this for an engineer. Maybe you wouldn't necessarily know about the actual standard specification for a you know, concrete form and a secant pile wall, but you wouldn't have to be concerned with that. Like an engineer, you know, their workload's full. This is a total of probably about 50 page sheet set that they produced, and it was only about you know, a $5 million project. So, in the grand scheme of things, it's really not that big. But nonetheless, there's still a lot of drawings that have to be done. And, you know, if you guys wanted to get an internship somewhere, this is exactly something that you'd be looking at doing. And even if you are interested in mechanical, um, all of these, like, you know, these are probably created from an actual BIM model, but forwarded over. But, I mean, these are all basic drawings that, you know, you guys could, it's not like you would have to make these to a specific scale. You just have to be able to kind of use your free thought ID and come up with these. The most important thing that you guys would have to face is just that if you are gonna work for a company that you have to be able to uh, create a drawing that's going to look like the rest of the drawings that the other people in the company are gonna produce. So that'd be like the biggest challenge. Um, let's see, yeah, we're gonna have some other examples, but I mean, like this would be a roadway project, like. You know, this is stuff that you guys could be doing. Uh, you'd have to create the actual sign layouts for these using probably something around the urban transportation manual would be standard for these. But I mean, this is something that you guys could literally get paid really good money for, especially while you're young, just to be able to go in here and, you know, just literally insert this sign and put an M leader over there and attach it. And very simple stuff that you guys, you know, do every day in this class. And so here is the resume that I have. Um, Guys, oh, um, so if any of you guys took technical writing with uh, Mr. Hussey, uh, did, I actually made this objective statement way back in high school in 2016, and I still use it to this day. Um, I just fill this in with whatever company you're looking for. But uh, you know, have an objective statement that's kind of relative to companies that you can change fast, but still sounds good. Um, you know, highlight your work, make sure that, you know, an experience that you guys do highlight your use of AutoCAD and all the different applications that you use, just because companies really are looking for those technical skill sets. And that's really what's gonna separate you guys as you leave high school, just to be able to get in there. Um, yeah, and then just kind of, you know, brief education. One of the biggest things you guys can put is, you know, how in a high and you have drafting experience. And, you know, if anybody knows anything about that, then they'll be very impressed. And then other skills, um, one of the biggest things that you guys should say is that you have knowledge of reading and understanding site plans and elevation drawings. Just because you guys do so much hands-on work with drafting in here that you guys can easily pick those up and we'll be able to figure it out. And you guys really wouldn't have that steep of a learning curve just because you're so familiar with drafting drawings in general that that's how they're all produced. Um, biggest thing is always say that you have a willingness to learn. I would say no matter how far you are in your career, you always will still have more and more to learn. And you go somewhere new and at the end of the day, you'll realize that you actually don't know anything. <laughs> um, you know, preference to creative design, you guys deal with that all the time. You guys have opportunity to be as free as you want. Um, effective communication is huge just because you will, as you go, no matter what engineering discipline you want to go into, you're going to have to work with other disciplines as well. So you're going to have a lot of interdisciplinary work that you have to do and you're maybe sometimes you're not going to be able to complete plans until other people are done. Um, and then decisive critical thinking, that's huge. I would always mention that just because that is a big aspect of drafting and just knowing the overall technology and yeah. Really, that's kind of like, this is what I used and I got hired by the one of the largest construction companies in the, the country. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, I'd love to answer some of them for you. Don't be bad for them. For further missing, say, say you're just starting. If you haven't worked, at like a professional company, how, how would you write that down? Um, so you wouldn't need to worry about it just because so as of right now, what you'd be doing is you'd be looking to apply for like an introductory position and they wouldn't, they wouldn't expect much experience. But so what you would want to do is elaborate more on the education side of things and talk about drafting. I would just say have one bullet point of drafting and go with a couple subheaders underneath it. They just talk about, you know, if you did the mechanical program, the architecture, all that. And then, you know, 
I guarantee that they'll see that you kind of have a more in depth than anybody else who's going to apply for that. And then if you can bring in your drawings, like you honestly probably just secured that job, no problem. Um, that AutoCAD certified thing you were talking yep. about, how would one go about getting that? Um, so it's an exam that you pay for online. Uh, I think with uh, COVID, they moved it to just be an all online exam. I don't think you have to go into an actual registered place anymore for it. Um, but you just, you find that just on the Autodesk website. Okay. And then whatever program you want to get certification in, you know, whether it be Civil 3D, Revit, any of that type of thing, uh, they just have a specific exam for it. Okay. So you just go find that software. And then uh, it should, there should be somewhere inside of that that would take you to a link to be able to apply for the so certification. It's on the website. Yep. And it's all administered through Autodesk, so. Any other questions? Sure. What was the most difficult transition from this program, high school level, to your college experience at MSU? What was the hardest thing for you to do? And then um, the easiest thing? So the easiest thing, honestly, like taking DDSN 131, like that class, so that is the introductory level college class that they make all electrical engineering students, civil engineering, uh, mechanicals, they take a little bit different of an AutoCAD class, but it's really not much different. And it, you, it just skims over the surface of the, of the product. Uh, they don't even teach you about viewports. They give you title blocks. You don't have to make any of your own. You don't even set up your own layer states. So you guys have way more knowledge of this. Like you guys actually have the overhead to be able to go create your own title blocks if you wanted to start your own company. You wouldn't have to copy it from somewhere. Um, they, like I said, they don't really get into viewports. They barely go into viewport scales, how to set them all up. Uh, they're kind of just given to you and it's really spoon fed. Um, I would say the hardest thing, um, for me, it wasn't necessarily a tied to college, but it was more of when I worked for Dowell, I would say the biggest challenge that I actually had was making sure that the drawings that I was producing was up to the company standard that they had and that it actually did match what other engineers were producing as well. Because this is, this is one drawing that's gonna go in like a 200 page plan set. So it's it's minuscule in the grand in the grand plan, but I mean, you wanna have those consistencies all throughout just because a lot of engineering firms around Montana, they're gonna be doing stuff for MDT because you know, transportation department around the state, that's the absolute gold mine. So that's kind of the standard they're looking for is they want everything to just look congruent for MDT. Well, thank you, Jimmy. Yeah, that was amazing. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> Jerry, if you want to stay in here and ask a couple more questions, you can. Everyone else, get out of here. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.